club testing in the UK in January. It's not much fun. Having said that, there are a lot worse things I could be doing with my life right now. And uh, yes, it's a bit snowy and it is a bit cold out there, but we've got a very interesting video to film that involves, well, two of those four clubs. And one of those clubs could be a bit of a game changer. I say that in jest. Or do I? Because game changing, well, maybe these clubs aren't, but making the wrong decision between the two certainly can be detrimental on your game and have a game changing effect, both negative and positive, depending on the decision you make, because these clubs featured in today's video, well, they're in theory the same, but are very, very different. You see, my channel is all about asking questions of the products that are released and how they might be beneficial to you as a golfer or possibly not. In today's video, I'm looking at two products from the new TaylorMade Stealth 2 lineup. Just about got that out. They are in fact two hybrids, they're four hybrids. They've got a little bit of difference in terms of the loft, which we're gonna adjust one of them to make sure they're exactly the same in that department. But trust me, they are very, very different performers. And like I said, you choose the wrong one of these two, and I think you've got a major problem on your hands. And it's important that I give you this information, at least from my perspective, so you're able to make a much more informed decision. So back on the mat, this is gonna be data led, and uh, I'll tell you why one of these is good for your game, and one of them perhaps not. So first of all, the two clubs in question, well, one is the Stealth Plus lineup. That's very much, I would say, perhaps the sort of players department, if you like, in terms of the lineup from Stealth. And then you've got the opposite end of the scale, this new HD lineup. So they're very, very different in terms of the target market. And trust me, they're very, very different in terms of how they perform, which is what I like to see, because at the end of the day, if there's multiple clubs on the shelf that effectively do the same job, there's no point in them being there. And in today's video, what you will see is there is a clear difference and a real good reason why both these versions exist. So first of all, from a Lux perspective, they're very different. Let's start off with this HD model. They've gone much more to sort of uh, a bigger profile. It's almost like a sort of mini fairway wood, if you like, very much a squashed and elongated crown and an address. Looks really good, but I think the most important thing is for getting looks right now, it's just about how much confidence this kind of club inspires. I say it time and time again, shorter shaft, closer to the club head, you see plenty of loft. I like the way there's a the, um, contrast between the silver face the dark crown see a lot of loft straight away you've got a lot of confidence then change that up and let's just have a look at what they've done in this stealth plus model now from the underneath again you'll see some back weighting in there you'll see that this is an adjustable model which is hence the reason we've been able to crank this one up one degree to match the 23 degrees that of the hd so there's some adjustability there which has some positive uh, performance attributes certainly in your ability to make it fit in your bag we'll talk about that later but you'll see the shaping the profile is completely different a much uh, smaller compact version of what we've just seen in terms of the hd they've done an interesting thing in terms of that front top line that separates the crown and the face in that it's a uh, different color it's a gray uh, frames of all ball very very differently I mean I'll take either to be honest from a visual perspective the dark face on the plus model doesn't seem to suggest there's as much loft on the club and therefore for me a visual perspective I'm leaning towards that HD model just because of the confidence that it gives but the question is they look different do they perform different? Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Well, I'm gonna start off with the HD model and what am I expecting to see? Well, I've mentioned on the channel in recent weeks that, I mean, quite obviously that sort of longer crown, if you like, profile, larger profile, Will allow that CG to be placed back. So what you're expecting to see is a higher launching ball than that of the Plus model, being a more sort of smaller, compact version of this in terms of the hybrid. So first of all, I'm expecting different ball flights. I'm expecting to see more spin from this in terms of that higher launch as well, and therefore maybe a reduced carry compared to that 
of the Stealth Plus Hybrid. They're the things I'm expecting to see, but what will happen in terms of performance? Right, let's hit one and see what we get. Right, that's absolutely solidly struck. Let's wait for some data. I mean, it was extremely high launching visually. And yeah, we got 21.6 launch, really high ball speed, 123. 43 spin off a four hybrid maybe a tad high but i'm okay with that peak height of 41 descent angle of 49.4 and a 185 carry so straight away you've got a real good first shot in terms of a set of data launching high yes spinning quite high but the descent angle is extremely steep peak height high still a 185 carry that's a decent set of numbers now in terms of game changer, that set of numbers alone to carry a 185 distance, that to me is something that you can't achieve with a lot of other clubs. You can't really achieve that set of numbers with your five or four iron equivalents, which I harp on quite a lot about. Right, let's try another one. Again, really solidly struck. Came off very, very similar, not a lot to split that. Uh, yeah, 21 degrees again, so launch angle same, 4.8 spin a little higher, almost identical descent angle, 49.5, a peak of 40, a 180 carry, once again, real good set of numbers. Right, I'm going to hit one more ball, try and speed this up for you a bit, but so far what I've seen from Stealth HD 4 Hybrid is it's doing exactly what I would expect it to do in terms of performance. I'll hit this last one and then we'll see what Stealth Plus does by comparison. Well, it's a lot easier in a driving range than it is in a golf course because they are almost identical. And the launch angle is the same as the first one, 21.6. 3.8 spin, I felt I got perhaps a little bit of mat there before ball, but again, 47.9 descent angle, 38 peak height, 182 carry. That's three shots that if you just look at that data, almost identical every shot very consistent but the main key takeaway for me is that high launch i expected perhaps a high spin peak height very high descent angle coming out of the clouds and a good carry distance how does it differ when i switch up into the stealth plus well the first thing is you're going to notice is a huge change in the way these two clubs look and again, it's down to confidence, maybe ability, maybe just what you like to see at a dress. This is much more compact, doesn't perhaps give the kind of confidence that, uh, that the HD model does. But let's see about performance and see what it does. That ball has absolutely flown in terms of off the face. Launch lower 17.347 spin, descent angle then is, um, is affected due to that uh, launch, lower launch 46.6, peak height of 36, but a 190 carry. So we've just seen the longest ball, we hit three with the HD, first ball hit with the plus, it's already the longest by five yards. It's also very different in the way it got there in terms of ball flight. Right, let's try that again. Again, ball's firing out and um, higher ball, that one. What have we got? Yeah, noticeably higher, 19.4 degrees. Um, probably preferred that ball flight personally. 4425, still 46.9 in terms of descent. Uh, 35 peak height and a 181 carry. So we lost a bit there. Uh, we certainly lost a bit in ball speed. It dropped down to 121, maybe a little bit of mat before ball. Uh, let's try one more and see if we can get something a little bit better than those two. Oh, that's a solid ball, and It's a nice ball to finish. Um, yeah, I mean, again, 20.3 on the launch. It's spinning at 4475. Peak ITF again 47.2, descent angle sorry 47.2 and a peak height of 37 with a 184 carry. Much better set of numbers, the last ball in particular for me was much more what I'd like to see. 
but from memory we've got quite a bit of difference there between the two in terms of their uh, overall performance and that's why it's really important that you don't just look at clubs and just dismiss them all as being the same because they're most certainly not there's very much a reason why every brand has got so many different models within their range right now and if you ever want proof of that just look at those sets of numbers 223 degree hybrids performing very very different in my opinion Right, I mean, that's it, job done. We'll try and keep this short and sweet. The idea is just to give you some, like I said, some information to go away with and uh, then find out if it's backed up when you try them yourself. But essentially, yeah, huge differences. Throw up the averages um, that after I've hit quite a few more balls, 21.4 compared to 19 degrees in terms of launch angle, 4.3 spin compared to 4.7, which is really interesting that the, uh, the plus was the higher spinning model. 48.9 descent angle, 46.9, 40 yards peak height, 35 yards peak height, and an average uh, carry there of 182 uh, as opposed to 180. What happened with a lot of the balls that I hit with the Stealth Plus when collecting the data was I started to lose a bit of carry distance because that launch angle dropped. And for me, interestingly, the sort of higher launching ball with maintaining a fairly low spin by comparison was turning out over a broader range of shots to have the longer carry distance so although that first ball i hit on camera i think was i don't know i think it topped out at 190 after that i really started to fall back into the sort of very similar if not slightly lower carry distances than what i was seeing with the hd so that again probably defied what they should do and maybe that again is just i'm not generating the kind of club head speed into that stealth plus model that i need to kind of generate that carry distance and the greater launch i don't know draw your own conclusions all i do know is that there are two products there that if you walk into the shop and see them with 23 degrees or 23 and 22 degrees you'd see them as being very very similar you might hit a few balls and think okay they seem to do similar things visually get on some dry ball data and just check out and make sure that they're doing exactly what you think they are because quite often what i find is that visually they look to be doing similar things but quite often if you drill down on these numbers and have a look exactly what they're uh, achieving then the performance can be very very different indeed right straightforward i mean it was more of a forget the brand, forget the models. I think what today was all about was just trying to make sure that I reiterate the point that uh, I think there's almost a bit of criticism just to how many different models there are in every brand's lineup right now, but they're there for a reason. And what there shouldn't be is a criticism. You should embrace the fact that there is uh, because the idea is there is certainly one that fits your requirements and uh, that can only be a positive. Right, as ever, I'm going to, well, thank you for watching. I'm going to carry on. We've got some more testing to do. Next one up is last year's Ping G425 driver against this year's G430. I know a lot of you are waiting to see the results of that, so keep your eyes peeled, and I'll see you all soon.